Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ableton Live Insider Tips. In this tutorial, I want to talk about the user library and how you can arrange things within the user library. So the user library can be found on the places here. And it depends which folders you actually see here, depending on if you've ever used it. Because some folders are recreated by life. If you save certain things and then I've already added some stuff as well. So this is a folder that I actually added myself. I'm going to get to that in, in a little while. First, we have the clips. So that contains all the live clips that I've saved into the user library. And next up, we have the defaults. Here, you might see slightly different folders depending on what you've actually saved yourself. Let's go through them though. So here you can, that's the default for the audio facts that I've changed. So that's EQ8, Looper and Spectrum. And what those are is when I go through here, the audio facts, and when you drag just a folder, then this is the default. And whenever you actually save a default of a preset, then this will be found in here for the audio effects. The same goes for instruments and MIDI effects. Let's say we can just try that right now and say we want to do a pitch. Just going to drag that over here. And let's say we want to, yeah, maybe like this. And then do a right click on it. And then we can save it as a default preset. And now when we go back to the user library, we see a new folder in here called Media Effects. And that in contains the pitch preset, which will be used as the default. I can also show you that that actually really works. So let's drag that over here. Just drag it into the second MIDI track, and here we go. Okay. And then in the audio to MIDI folder, you can determine what should happen when you actually use one of those functions, drums to MIDI, harmony to MIDI, or melody to MIDI. So for example, if you want to make sure that there is a, for example, the grand piano to play the harmony, then you could add it there. Or, of course, if you want any other preset, the Pat's preset or whatever, you can just add it in here. As you can see, I haven't created my own presets for that yet. And of course, because everything works with drag and drop, you can just drag presets in there and those will be used as the default presets for the audio to MIDI functions. Then dropping samples, it depends on like, what happens when you drop an audio file onto the device view, onto a drum rack, or onto the track view. As you can see here, I've actually added a sampler here, and a sampler there. So depending on what, we, what you like, you can just decide what should happen. For example, by default, this would be a, a simpler as well, both. And then, of course, we also have the slicing presets. So when you slice to MIDI, then your own presets will be saved here. And those are all pretty much apart from one from my old Life 8 library. OK, so those are all the defaults. Next up, in here, you could save all the grooves that you create yourself. And then here, you can save all the presets. But right now, most of the stuff for me is empty because I haven't used those. As you can see, they all have subfolders depending on the type of device. 
And here we eat have all the samples that you added to the user library. And I'm not quite sure why I have samples and waveforms because they're pretty much the same. That might be a remnant from a Live 8 preset that I added. And then also I have a live set in there. So basically you can just drag and drop anything in here and uh, you don't even have to worry. I, I generally just drag it in here first and then I rearrange it the way I want. Um, so let's get to that. So I personally decided that for all the instrument presets, um, mainly the ones that I created myself, that I wanted that to have them in my specific order um, because I quite often use them through push and then when I go through push and the user library then this is the first folder that I see. So if you want to have the quick access through push, name it something so it appears here first. It's alphabetical. An exclamation mark, for example, is also something that some people use. Um, this in this case, for me, it worked out. And here I just rearranged everything by what kind of sounds there are. So basically, you can just drag and drop stuff in there as well. So for example, I could just say here, this is not really a synth. So I'd rather have that in the strings. I can just drag that in here, and now I've got it in here. I'm actually going to move that back. OK, so drag and drop works and What's also great is that, let's see, for example, here, if we just type in the first name in here, and you see, of course, it's in this folder, but we can also go through sounds and maze, and you see, it will be shown here as well. So even if you create your own structure, that works fine. You just have to be aware that for the defaults, at least you need to keep this, this structure um, because those are for the default presets and for life to know that you want them to be used for the default presets, they really have to be in here. I think for the rest, it really is up to you. So yeah, that's um, the user library. So you can save all your own presets, all your own clips, grooves and samples and even live set. Everything that you want to keep, you can save in the user library in Life9. So I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time. If you're new to Ableton Live or Push, then check out my online video courses. More information can be found on my website sonicbloom.net slash courses.